You're listening to Crowning Ignorant Kings, a podcast for citizens with like minds who love God, follow Christ, and have a desire to be an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven on earth. We are John and Charlene Donaldson. We're teachers building a kingdom community. Thank you again for joining us. Now let's adjust our crowns. All right, family, once again, it's John and Charlene Donaldson. Just trying to be more consistent. When we we tend to question each other and sharpen each other, and we have questions, and it just starts this deep conversation. And a lot of times I'll just catch myself in the middle of it. It's like, man, I wish I had recorded that. So my wife pulled out a Bible and she started studying and she was getting ready to ask me a question. So I said, hold up, wait, <laughs> let's get this recorded. Just trying to be more consistent with this. I'm going to let her go ahead and we'll dive into the word and, and see what comes out of this. Well, I was just, like I said, I had been reading and studying, looking at Matthew 6 um, verses 24 to 34 and it's just something that I've been looking at more closely about seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added and Jesus talking to a group of people and what he's actually saying to them another thing I had thought about that can be reflected in this scripture well he tells us a few quite a few times it's about four times saying you know do not worry which sounds more like a command than him asking you to do him a favor and not to worry um that's something we've often heard people say if you're going to worry don't pray but if you're going to pray don't worry but i believe he's talking to the group of people to influence them to open up their hearts and minds to the kingdom of god because right after john the baptist had baptized him and it said in chapter that when he was told that John had been thrown in prison, you know, he departed. And that's when his ministry began and began to say, you know, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about his kingdom because the group of people he was communicating with needed to understand the difference in the kingdom of God and the kingdom, the Roman kingdom of what they were used to. But Getting back to that part when he's talking to them about nobody can serve two masters. And then he goes on to say you can't serve one. Either he will hate hate the one and love the other or else he will be love the other one and hate. Or he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Which is talking about money or anything that gets your attention and draws you away from the things of God. That becomes a priority in your life. So when he's talking to them, he's telling them to not worry about what they eat. You know, know about your body, what you're going to put on it. You know, then he tells you to look at the birds of the air. You know, for they neither sow nor weep nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Now, are you not of more value than they? Which we actually are, but a lot of times that's something, you know, I guess we can look at. Do you actually value yourself or consider yourself as being more valuable? I know I've encountered people who, I guess they've messed up so badly in life, they they believe that not even God will forgive them. But he's exhorting them to consider some things. He tells you don't worry. Then he tells them again about the lilies of the field, how they grow. You know, don't worry about what you're going to eat or drink. And one of the things he pointed out, it says, therefore... And the word therefore, I mean, I kind of looked up every little single word in there <laughs> to try to get an understanding. Mm-hmm. Say for that reason, and prior to him saying that, you know, when he said consider, you know, the lilies of the field, and to consider something is to think carefully about something. Mm-hmm. How they grow, they neither toil nor spin, and yet I say unto you, not even Solomon in all his glory was arrayed or dressed or clothed like one of them. So will he not much more clothe you? And then he goes on to say, oh, you of little faith. So it's like you have little faith, but that's an indication that God wants our faith to be a lot more stronger and our faith to increase when it comes to... So here's Jesus sitting and talking to these people 
Then he goes on to tell him, do not worry, saying. A lot of times what we say out of our mouths can undo what right. it is that we desire. And I know myself as well as other people, we speak such negative words all the time and we don't realize that what we desire, what we may have prayed for, what we believe in God for, we can't keep saying the wrong things and expect to get positive results. Right. So when he tells them, therefore do not worry, and that, remember that's a command not to worry, not to be over anxious about something, or give way to anxiety or unease, allow one's mind to dwell on difficulty or troubles. And we can dwell on things and that can weigh heavy on our minds. And that's a term, weighing heavy, which our minds are not designed to carry, to carry that type of weight. That's why we have so many people that have a nerve, what we call a nervous breakdown. Because the weight, it just imagine just something you can't even tangibly see or feel or hold in your hand. Just how powerful your thoughts are. Right. That could just cause your whole mind to go haywire. Mental system crash. Yeah, a mental system crash and just, you know, your whole behavior. And then you begin to say things that just, you know, that just, just appear to be not normal. And people can view and see that something is mentally wrong. And that's a lot that's going on in the world today. A lot of mental illness, which is not new. But it seems like it's more and more now because people, we, we focus so much on what we see, the problems and the things in the world, and that weighs heavy on our minds. And that begins to affect our mental health. But this is Jesus telling them, do not worry, say it. So that's something I was thinking about today, the things that we say. And there's a song that I had mentioned that I was listening to by Donald Lawrence, there's a um, law of confession. You just say what God has said. Right. And the word for confession, or the Greek word for it, is homologio, which means to say the same thing. Say what God has said. So when we confess anything in reference to God's word and in reference to the things of God and God's kingdom, we have to say the same thing God is saying, We, which means we have to think and know what he would think and what he would say. Right. That's why his word tells us to, in Romans 12 and 2, to be transformed. We have to be completely changed right. by the renewing of our minds. We Meditate have to change and change a lot of the things that we're thinking. And we do that through the word of God. We have to study God's word. We have to spend time in communion with God that God can reveal and unveil the revelation of his word even the more by our personal time spent with him in prayer and in study of his word. It may be even a book just in reference to the principles of God. So we have to be careful of the things we're saying. It says, do not worry saying what we shall eat, what we shall drink, or what we shall wear. For all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows you have need of all these things. So he's aware. He's not, you know, a God that's saying, I, um, you know, I don't care about that. But he tells us to do something. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. Which means that comes along with the kingdom. So you don't have to worry about provision for anything right. that pertains to you. And life. There's a scripture that said God has given us all things that pertain so unto life, life and, godliness. and godliness. But the thing is, do we believe that? So watch your confession because a lot of times we'll say we believe something, but then we'll confess something different, which you're not confessing the same thing that God has said. So when you look in his word and you begin to see what he says about it, and say what he says, we can see the results. I hear sometime, or you read, people may use, okay, the universe, you know, will yield to you. Some of the things I've read and studied, even as far as the subconscious mind, and how powerful our thoughts are, and the things we say, how we, we may say a lot of things that, I've, I've looked at it as vibrating the heavens. 
your words will reach a place in the atmosphere where it will yield to you whatever it is that you said. Right. So if you're not saying the right thing, it, it could be positive or negative. You're going to get results. Right. So if you want something positive, you got to be mindful of what you said. You can say, just an example, like sometimes, you know, I'll just say this one. You know, sometimes you say, man, I was dying laughing. Well, no, you weren't dying, mm -hmm. which we don't realize how powerful people would say, well, it's just a joke. You know, I, and I used to feel that way, and a lot of times we would say things in a joking way because it's just what we say and do, and it's funny. But then learning that our subconscious mind can't take a joke. That's right. Which means that it doesn't know that you're joking. So when you're constantly saying something, you're opening up the door to something. You're shaping and molding your world to bring about something just by the words that you're speaking. Right. And we got to realize that, you know, just like, man, I was laughing so hard. My st and, you know, sometimes even with me, sometimes I laugh so hard my stomach be tight. Or you got tears in your eyes. But to keep saying, man, I was dying laughing or, you know, singing something that, you know, she killed it or she did this. You know, we say negative things for something positive and we expect positive results but we have to be careful and mindful of how powerful we as human beings and we're made in the image of God God speaks things into existence we do the same thing right. our words carry power right he only wants to he speaks what he wants to see. see thank you for listening to crowning ignorant kings where we are cultivating a kingdom community please sign up for our podcast download like and share look for us on your social media platforms if you'd like to reach out to us please send us an email at crowningignorantkings at gmail.com